Hello. I wanted to discuss other methods of coherence when you're writing. Um, my last video, a series of videos on coherence did discuss other methods of using coherence in your writing and that was on how the importance of writing paragraphs using some sort of order and I discussed three types. One was called a time order or a chronological order. The next one was using a space order. And the third, <clears throat> excuse me, was called order of importance. And I introduced in the website a video on each, and they are important videos to review in order to include some sort of logical order in your writing to keep your reader focused. Now this uh, video, I have this one and another one on methods of coherence, and um, I'm going to discuss further other methods to add coherence, to make your writing flow so one idea links neatly into the next. Keep in mind not only um, is it important to have order in your writing, but you should also review any videos on the use of transition words what they are, and how using transition words and phrases will add unity to your writing as well and make your ideas flow. So uh, if you would like to follow along with me, I am going to teach you other methods of coherence that you can use in your writing to make your ideas flow. So keep in mind when a paragraph is coherent, the sentences will all flow smoothly into each other so that it makes one nice written unit, one nice piece of writing. And it's important for writers to revise or proofread writ your written work so that you're sure that all your ideas do flow and that your reader understands what you have written. So here are some other pointers on ideas of how to add coherence to your writing. And I've also tried wherever possible to give you um, examples or link you to other videos in my website to help you. The first example is um, a good idea is to repeat keywords and ideas. What that means is if you use this technique it will keep your reader focused on your ideas and you'll maintain a thread that keeps your paragraph or your essay linked and flowing smoothly. So it's a good idea within your paragraph or your writing to repeat a key word or a key idea. Now you don't want to become too repetitive. It's important. You don't want to keep using the same word over and over again, but you do want to have some thread, some flow in your writing um, uh, without becoming too repetitive. Now if you're using the same word over and over again, then your work becomes boring but you need to have some kind of a thread. So if you're talking about what your goals are, you don't want to keep repeating the same word, my goal is, my goal is, another goal of mine is, but you want to keep the same thread. So you could look a word up in a thesaurus or a dictionary, and instead of saying my goal, you could say my, my aim, what I want in the future, my future desires, etc. So keep this in mind that you should try to repeat some keywords or ideas in your writing. Another point is you should have pronoun references in your writing. What that means is you should try to replace your nouns with pronouns so you're not always repeating the same words. In other words, you don't want to keep repeating the same person's name, John, 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 John. You could say instead, you could use a pronoun like say he. This maintains your focus and it will also add variety to your word choice. Words like that, these, those, and this will help to connect your ideas within a paragraph. So those are other words you can use. That, these, those, and this. Now I've also linked you here to a video on pronoun antecedent agreement and there are lots of rules and explanations in that video that will also help you with using pronouns and pronoun references to keep your paragraph or your writing um, coherent. A third idea that I believe is important is to use synonyms. Now synonyms are words that mean the same um, but you're using, instead of the same word, you're looking it up in the dictionary and you, you're using another word that means the same as the original word that you use. You use a synonym if you don't want to keep, the same, keep repeating the same word over and over again, 
or you don't want to use a pronoun. So a synonym is a word or a phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase. So you're not becoming repetitive, you're using another word that means the same or close to the same as what you're saying. Using synonyms will vary your language, but at the same time, it will convey the same thoughts in your writing. So what I suggest is that you consult a dictionary or a thesaurus and you find a correct synonym to add variety to your writing so you're not repetitive. For example, a synonym for the word small would be little or petite. So instead of using the same word over and over again, you could change it from small to little to petite, etc. A synonym for damp, rather than being repetitive, could be moist. A synonym for clear, if you're being clear in your views, you'd be vivid. So get in the habit of using a thesaurus or a dictionary to come up with a different word to vary your diction or word choice. Another method that I've included that would help in, um, in adding some variety to your writing as well as adding coherence is using parallel structure. Writing your sentences in parallel format reinforces the unity of your ideas. Now let me explain what this means. Uh, parallel structure adds balance and it also adds emphasis to your writing so it helps to unify your thoughts and it also maintains your focus in your, re in your writing so you don't lose your reader. Now I have included a video in this website called Parallel Structure or Parallelism which will further explain these rules. I've given you one example but if you follow um, parallel structure, you are adding coherence to your writing, balance to your writing, and it makes your ideas flow and your reader will understand you. Here's one example that I've included. This sentence lacks parallel structure. Mila taught Sarah how to ride a bike, bake a cake, and tennis. All right, in this, it lacks parallel structure because you're saying uh, Mila taught Sarah how you started with the verb to ride a bike, bake a cake, so there's your verb, and tennis, there's no verb. So you've just said tennis, it's a noun. So to turn it parallel, you could rewrite it and say Mila taught Sarah how to ride a bike, to bake a cake, and to play tennis. So now it's parallel because you've got the verb, the verb, and the verb. So you need to understand to write in parallel structure and again please review my video within the website on parallel structure because it will really help you with your writing skills and teach you how to write coherently. Another pointer is, and I've mentioned this in an earlier video on coherence, is you should always be using transitional words and phrases in your writing. They're also known as connectives and these will combine your ideas. These transition words are essential because they connect your ideas, they introduce comparisons and contrasts and causes and effects and emphasis. And I have included a list of transitional words and phrases in my coherence videos. There are a few coherence, I believe it's coherence one and even coherence two video that will link you um, to different transitional words. And there are many transitional words that you can use. So if you look at my videos on um, use of order, order of importance, order of time, and chronological order, um, as well as space order, I have introduced you to many, many types of transitional words in those videos. Okay, here's another um, pointer to add coherence to your writing is using coordination to relate your ideas. There are times when ideas are so closely related that they should be joined in a single sentence and if that's the case they can be joined by using these coordinating words and there are seven coordinating words to join two simple ideas and, but, for, yet, so, or, or nor. Those would join two ideas and add transition um, and add coherence to your writing. Here's an example of coordination in this sentence. I arrived at work uh, late, so I missed the business meeting. So you're joining two ideas using a coordinating word and that's adding coherence to your writing. As well, you can use subordinating conjunctions to join your ideas. 
Some examples of subordinating conjunctions are these words, although, unless, whereas, in order that, should be a comma, because, before, or so that. And I've included an example of a uh, uh, using coordination. He will miss the meeting because he missed the bus. So there is a use of a, sub a subordinating word to join ideas and keep your reader focused. You can also use something called conjunctive adverbs and connecting phrases to link your ideas. And I've given you some examples here. To add an idea, you can use one of these connecting words, indeed, furthermore, also, besides, moreover, or in fact. To show an alternative, you can use these words, on the other hand, at the same time. If you're contrasting two things, showing differences, you can use these words still yet, however, nonetheless. These are all connecting words. And to demonstrate a result, you can say, therefore, hence, or consequently. And I've included an example of a sentence using a conjunctive adverb. He was late for work. Consequently, he missed the business meeting. If you're using a conjunctive adverb to join two complete ideas, you have to put the semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and the comma after. And there are many, many conjunctive adverbs that can be used. And I've said here for a detailed list of conjunctions as well as rules on the use of coordinating and subordinating words, you, um, I suggest you review the video in my website called Conjunctions, Subordinating and Coordinating Words. And I've outlined all this and it will be a great help to you not only in joining ideas within a paragraph but also helping you with sentence structure. And moving along with more examples of how to add coherence is you want to maintain consistency in your writing. Any inconsistencies makes it difficult for the reader to follow the development of your ideas. And this occurs when the writer shifts in number, person, or in verb tense. So let me explain what I mean here by shift in number. Um, shift in number is right here. It's important that you don't shift from singular to plural or from plural to singular within a single sentence or a paragraph. You have to choose either the singular or the plural and you have to remain consistent. So here's an example. This is an example of an inconsistent number. Peaches are the most flavorful when it is purchased in season. Well peaches is plural and it is singular. So it's inconsistent and now you, it's making your paragraph or your writing incoherent. Um, so how do you add coherency? Well, you have to write inconsistent number. Peaches are the most flavorful when they. So now they're both in plural. Peaches is plural and they is plural. So both must be either in the singular or the plural. I put them both in the plural. Also, you must be careful uh, of another example of an inconsistent number. The smart shopper chooses their store specials very carefully. You've got one shopper, but now you're using the plural there. So here is an example of turning it consistent. The smart shopper chooses his or her, so it's singular. Or another way is you could say smart shoppers choose their. Some writers don't like to write his or her. And you can't just say his because then it would not be fair. You're not being, um, it, it's really sexist to do that. So an easy way to avoid it is just to do the plural and say smart shoppers choose their store specials very carefully. Another way to add coherence to your writing is to watch in your shift in person. This is similar to consistency in number. It means that you must use the same person or in definite pronoun form throughout a sentence or a paragraph. Okay, so these are rules, but let's look at the examples. It'll make it a lot clearer. I've outlined first person is the most personal and informal style of writing, and you'd use this for casual writing. So typical uses are, for example, in personal letters or uh, personal anecdotes. So you would use I or we in personal writing. The second person is used to directly address the person like you would use you for singular or plural. And third person is the most formal style of writing and you would write in third person for academic writing and in business writing or employment. 
The singular is he, she, it, one, or you use words like an individual, a manager, and so on. Or the plural would be they, people, students, owners, and so on. So in business writing, you would not write personally and you shouldn't say I or refer I or me or we. You would use um, he, she, it, and write in the third person. Okay, let's see now what I mean by giving you some specific examples. It'll make it a lot easier. Here's an example of an inconsistent use of person. A new employee at this company gets a week's vacation after you were here for six months. That's a complete shift from a new employee, which is in the third person, to the second person, you. So how could you correct that? To make it consistent, you'd say a new employee at the company gets a, week, a week's vacation after he or she. So they're both now agreeing. You're not shifting in, in person. Or even easier, you could say new employees at this company get a week's vacation after they have worked here for six months. So now it's an agreement. So now no longer is there an inconsistent person reference. Another example, this is inconsistent. One should eliminate too much cholesterol from your diet. You cannot shift your use of pronouns. So how have I made it consistent? Well, right here, you should eliminate too much cholesterol from your diet or one should eliminate too much cholesterol from one's diet. So if you learn these rules, it's all going to help you to uh, be more coherent in your writing. So I've mentioned to try to avoid confusing and unnecessary shifts from one person to another. Try to be consistent throughout a sentence or throughout your paragraph. And if you're using a general noun, such as a person, an individual, or you're saying the girl, the babysitter, then don't shift then and start saying you in the same sentence or the same paragraph. The whole paragraph must refer to the same pronoun and you must be consistent in person. Be certain to continue to use the third person um, all the way through or use he or she. Do not shift your reference within a paragraph. Another thing to avoid is shifting in verb tense. The tenses of verbs and verb forms should always be consistent and you shouldn't shift tenses because you will completely confuse your reader within the, your writing, within your paragraph. Here are some examples. Here's inconsistent verb. After Jim received in the past tense his university diploma, his mother proudly hugged him and his father takes his picture. That's in the past tense, received. Hugged is the past tense, takes is the present. Wrong. You have to have all your verbs consistent. So I've changed it for you to make it consistent. After Jim received in the past tense his diploma, his mother hugged in the past tense him and his father took his picture. All three must be consistent. All three must either be in the present or the past or you no longer have coherence in your sentence. Another example, this is inconsistent. Johnny noisily ran into the room, past tense, grabbed a large piece of cake, past tense, and goes. Now you've shifted to the present. So how do I make this consistent? Well, let's take a look. Johnny noisily ran into the room, past. He grabbed in the past a large piece of cake from the platter, and now he went back outside to play with his friends. So you must not shift verb tenses within a sentence or within a paragraph because you lose coherence and your reader will not be able to follow what you're saying. So another quick point to remember, and I know there's a lot of in this video to follow. So here's my final point. Keep in mind, please, the grammar check may not always locate these types of errors. It, it will not locate errors in shifts and tense. It might not locate um, errors in number or person. So try to learn the rules in order to avoid making these types of errors. Shifts in verb tense may be necessary sometimes and acceptable when you have to shift um, in time to reflect a certain situation. But more often than not, you should try to keep your writing all in the same tense and don't shift time. The only way to be certain you're achieving consistency in your writing is to review your writing carefully and follow all the rules closely. So uh, please remember that you should always remain consistent in your writing 
do not rely completely on grammar check and spell check ever because it will not grammar check will not pick up all your errors so I suggest you review this video carefully and refer to of my videos on shifting in pronoun and pronoun modifiers and I have a lot in my website of videos which will help you to teach you how to write consistently. So uh, please feel free to review this video. It's a long video. I see it's a 20 minute video. I've got lots of information in here. Please contact me if you have any further questions because I have included a lot of rules and information for you teaching you how to write coherently. Thank you so much.